Up next, the six million dollar man. Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Interstellar Modeler. In this video, I'm going to be working on a figure of the six million dollar man. Uh, if you were to ask me to name three of my childhood heroes, they would be James Kirk, James West, and Steve Austin. The Six Million Dollar Man is one of those shows I sat faithfully in front of the TV every Sunday night, just uh, anticipating the new episodes and talking about them the next day with my friends and certainly running across a playground in slow motion. <laughs> um, but I came across this file uh, a little bit ago on CG Trader. Uh, my friend Omar made me aware of it, so I just had to get a hold of it. And check this out, the artist also has files to create the Bigfoot character along with Oscar Goldman, which has a great likeness, and Jamie Summers. The designer goes by the name of We Make Monsters there on CG Trader, and as you can see, there are a variety of other files available as well. You have SDL files that uh, can help you create statues from classic monster movies. Here is a statue of the lion from Wizard of Oz. And check this out. This is a diorama from the recent HBO Max series called The Last of Us. Really great show. The diorama includes the characters played by Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey as they fight off one of the infected. Really cool diorama. So I'll place the link to the page below. So um, what I'm going to get started on, in fact I've already started on the figure, is we're going to begin by first piecing the figure together. And uh, what I have found with uh, these figures, now I haven't done a lot of them, but uh, of the ones that I have done, there are oftentimes some pretty major gaps between the pieces. Now this might be a setting that I need to adjust in my printer here, but uh, nonetheless I have found that to be the case. And to fill those gaps I've been comfortable using epoxy sculpt putty. Uh, epoxy sculpt is real easy to use. Um, it's thicker so it fills in the gap really well. If you were to use just regular plastic putty it would take quite a bit of putty to, to do the job. And uh, epoxy sculpt is very easy to shape and mold and just with water you can smooth it over. So I already have the legs attached to the upper torso here. And you can see there's epoxy sculpt there that's pretty much dry now. I did this a little earlier today. And so the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to do that. I'm going to start off with one of the arms. Uh, the pieces generally come with this little key and a hole on the opposite side. So you're supposed to be able to put them together. But you'll see there is a sizable gap there that needs to be addressed. Um, so it's one of those things I don't mind doing. It doesn't take very long to do. And um, after having done a few of these, I've become very comfortable at it. So it might seem like a lot of work, but it really isn't. And uh, once these um, seams are all set, then we get started with painting. I do have the face and neck masked off because the, the figure is outfitted in his workout uh, suit that you see in the credits, the opening credits, and certainly we saw in the pilot episode. And the, he also has the white chest monitors as well. So I thought it would be good to separate his face just by taping it off. Uh, that way I don't get a bunch of red paint on it. And, um, and then, by the way, the figure also comes, or at least the files also come, with this stand that we'll be placing them on. And you can see it has a $6 million man logo. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started with um, the epoxy sculpt putty. Now, the first thing I try to do is to improve the fit. And what I've got here is a wet paper towel to catch the shavings so it doesn't fly all over the place. That way, when I'm done, I can just roll this up. And I am wearing a mask to do this, and I've got my little rotary tool here with this pointed attachment here that's going to allow me to grind away some of this stuff. So. So it appears this side will be the closest fit. Uh, there is a sizable gap here then on the other side. We'll have to fill in with the putty. So again, it's a good idea to have this wet paper towel around because you can just wipe off the dust. It sticks to the paper instead of flying all around. And uh, this tool is very handy. This is actually the main reason I bought this tool was to get rid of some of these areas where you have supports. Um, it's just much easier than sanding using sandpaper. So now that I have this done, I'll go back to the other bench, uh, my main bench there, and uh, 
we'll get started with using the epoxy sculpt to fill in these gaps. Well, the first thing is to attach the arms. We're going to use super glue to do that. So I've got the glue here and an accelerator ready to go. Now, just to make maneuvering a little easier, um, I'm going to go ahead and do each arm separately. So I'm not going to attach this one just yet. Let me go ahead and mix up the epoxy sculpt. We just want equal amounts of this stuff. And just kind of set it side by side. Make sure you have about an equal amount of each side. And I'm going to knead it together here now. Okay, we have a little water here off to the side. And... Uh, have my sculpting tools ready. Okay, I'm just going to place a small amount here as we go along. Kind of shove it right into the gap. And just with water, I'm just pressing up against it. And I just try to get the gap filled, and then I just use my gloves here to smooth the edges down so you don't have to do as much sanding. And try to follow the contour of the shirt itself. And just always trying to keep the rest of it clean so it doesn't dry. You have to do more sanding than you need to. And we just keep moving on. Okay, and here is the figure now with the arms attached. I'm going to give this some time for the epoxy sculpt to dry. And I'll do a little sanding to smooth it over a little bit. But as you can see, the technique really is to use that water to do the best you can to smooth things over so you don't have to do as much sanding. And try to feather the edges as much as possible so you don't have a big piece to have to sand over and smooth. And you can see it's very easy to contour and shape into the, the uh, same shape as the adjoining uh, areas. So here's the figure primed now, and as I was hoping for, I didn't have to do too much sanding. And uh, so the figure is all set to be painted now, and I'm going to use Vallejo colors, using Vallejo Scarlet as the base color, and adding vermilion for the highlights, and maybe flat red, which is a little darker than Scarlet, for the shadows. Well, what you're looking at here is the second attempt at painting the, uh, the jumpsuit here. I started off with Vallejo Scarlet and uh, tried mixing in a flat red also. No matter what I did, it just didn't look right. It just was not a very good color of red. So my friend Joe Hudson recommended getting a hold of this paint from Monument Hobbies. And this is called um, Bold Pyro Red. And it's worked out beautifully. Um, so I've already applied, of course, the base color. And uh, what you see here are also the shadows in which I just put in a drop or two of purple to darken up that red. So what I need to do now is to darken up some of these other areas. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go any darker along the legs here. But uh, because the cloth is more crinkled here, um, it would make sense to have a bit darker shadows around these areas. So what I'm going to try is a technique I've been wanting to try for some time. And what we have here now is poster putty. This is the stuff to use to hang up posters um, as an alternative to tacking things on with a, with an actual thumbtack. And the idea here is to have something that masks these areas without creating harsh lines. Uh, because the uh, thing that you're using to mask here is round, um, you know, it, when there's overspray, you're not going to have this harsh, uh, harsh line. So I'll move forward again here with the uh, mix that has a little bit of purple in it. And once that's completed, I'll show you what it looks like here. way it's coming out pretty well and uh, once we get more of the highlights on I think it'll really turn out great so uh, you can see how the shirt has been darkened up now and uh, we don't really have any we don't have too many sharp lines we have a little bit of a sharp line right here but that can be uh, once I get um, the highlights on that'll soften that edge up a bit too so I'm going to go ahead now and proceed with masking some of these other areas off and painting in some of the darker shadows as well.
And then we got to the highlights. Well, I have some of this masked off now because I'm getting ready to paint uh, his face and the hair, but um, I'm very pleased with the way it all came out. Hopefully you can see some of the shading here. The putty really worked great to help direct the airbrush. Um, as one gets better, you probably don't really rely on such techniques, but uh, I still have a ways to go with my airbrush skills in this manner. Uh, but uh, very pleased with how it all came out, and the red turned out really nice. Uh, again, this is the red from Monument Hobbies, and I'll put a link down to their website. Um, really nice color, sprayed on evenly and dried really quickly, and um, mixed in a little purple there for the shadows, and then I used vermilion for the highlights. A um, little bit challenging to get it any brighter than this actually, so I didn't want to keep going because uh, otherwise it would just start turning pink. Now I've done the shoes here and uh, this was just simply done by applying a gloss coat over a gray white. I used Vallejo's gray white for that. And I used a black wash from Vallejo as you can see here just applying it. Very simple to do. Uh, this wash is so easy to work with once it's dried, you just take water with a cotton swab and you just wipe away the excess. And yeah, worked out great. So I'm um, getting ready now to apply paint to the face and the hands. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put this cover on them. And uh, we'll get started with that. So for the skin tones, I'm going to be relying on this uh, color combination I learned from Joe Hudson. He's actually moved on from using these colors, but I haven't learned his new technique yet. And uh, so I'm going to continue on with this. So we're going to start off with a beige red and uh, adding in some mahogany brown. Add a little water to this, this is just distilled water. And uh, mix up our paints here. And this will function as the base color. And then we're going to apply about three or four layers of this. And then move on to the shadows and the highlights. So I've demonstrated this technique before, so I'm very much going to abbreviate it here. If you'd like to know more about it, just check out the Ahura and Gorn Black Heart Bust video, and I'll place a link to that below. As I said, the technique is the same. Of course, the colors are different here since I'm doing a lighter skin tone. And the first step here is applying that base color. And by the way, I did add a few drops of pale flesh to lighten it up a bit. The shadows were next, and this color was created by adding in more mahogany brown to the base color. And the highlights color was made by adding in more pale flesh to the base color. The trick to painting this way is to add multiple thin layers as you go along, and to use wet blending techniques to avoid harsh demarcations between the light and darker shades. So it does take time and patience, and uh, as you build up the color though, uh, you'll see that it all starts to come together. The thin down paints also help to avoid brush strokes and an uneven finish. So once the face and hands were completed, I moved on to the hair, and for this I started with a base of burnt umber. Once this was dried, this was followed by a very dark brown wash, and once that was dried, I used a light Terran brown from Vallejo's Game Color collection. Well, now that the Bionic Man is completed, I'm just finishing up the uh, display here, and I'm just dry brushing on some silver onto the logo here. And uh, I will follow this up then with uh, just a gloss coat, and we'll attach the Six Million Dollar Man. So I will finish that up, show you the completed project here in just a second. Alright, so here we now have the completed figure of the Six Million Dollar Man, and although you can certainly print him larger, this figure stands 9 inches tall. I really love how the sculpt has a great likeness to Lee Majors, and if you are a fan of the show, you'll certainly recognize the red workout suit he's outfitted in, which not only appeared in the pilot episode, but also every week in the opening credits. I used paint from Monument Hobbies, which was recommended by my friend Joe Hudson, and it worked out great. It's such a nice vibrant red, and it was easy to spray on and work with. I really am going to look into their paint collection further. By adding in some purple, I was able to create some nice looking shadows, but attempting to brighten the color was a little bit of a challenge. As I kept trying to brighten the color, it started to look more and more pink, so I decided to just finish it as you see here. I am happy with the skin tones I was able to achieve here using Vallejo paints. The combination of their beige red mixed with mahogany brown and pale flesh colors worked well here. 
The sculpt of the hair has a lot of nice deep recesses, which I took advantage of by darkening with a dark brown wash, and this was a nice contrast to the lighter Terran brown I used for the highlights. Now, I should point out that it is not 100% accurate, particularly regarding the chest monitors. The connections to the chest monitors are shown here as large cords, but they actually were numerous transparent tubes that you can see here in this picture. No doubt this would be a challenge to try to design and print. One idea might be to try to use fiber optics to replicate the look of these tubes, but unless you can alter the appearance of the top of his tunic to allow those to be tucked in, I'm not sure it would look all that great. But for me, this is just a minor thing. I'm just excited to have this now in my collection. And lastly, I'll point out that I also printed this statue completely solid. I chose to do so to avoid adding support to the insides. Combined with the base, the figure is nicely balanced and really makes for a great display piece. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed following along. I really wasn't sure I was going to make this video, but uh, you know, as I mentioned in the last, at the end of the last video, I was running out of time. We were getting close to Wonderfest, but I was able to uh, to um, spend a bit of time to catch up with some stuff. And uh, as I started this project, I was just thinking, you know, you don't see a lot of six million dollar man stuff around, and so I thought you guys might be interested in following along. I hope you didn't mind it. I abbreviated a lot of things, you know, painting videos. Uh, you know, painting figures, not the most exciting thing to watch, and I've shared a lot of these techniques with blending and stuff like that in previous videos. The one technique I did wanted to share with you this time for sure was using that putty. This is something I'd never tried before, and it, I was reminded of it as I stumbled across a video on TikTok. A guy used the uh, technique to detail a World War II plane, and uh, my first attempt at painting this figure was not very good. I, I just was not getting the look I wanted, and so I was reminded about the technique and definitely gave it a try, and it worked out great. Uh, by the way, AK Interactive also has their own version of this putty. They basically advise using it for camouflage uh, with World War II paint schemes. Uh, I'm not sure how much that runs, but uh, the poster putty only runs like five bucks on Amazon, and I like that it's a white color, because one of the challenges I've had with airbrushing is um, being able to direct it to the, to the place I've wanted it to spray, and the fact that it's white, you can actually tell where the airbrushing is, is, is hitting. Uh, some of the, the, uh, the color variations here are very subtle, and uh, so especially here where I just darkened the shadows just a little bit, it was really hard to tell it was really going on until it got really, really dark. Um, airbrushing, by the way, is one of these skills I've been wanting to improve for some time. I've been inspired through the years by uh, a number of the different things I've seen at Wonderfest. I know a lot of people who paint these large figures and busts rely very heavily on airbrushing, and uh, so it's something I've really wanted to try to work at. Oh, and by the way, one other thing I wanted to briefly share with you is I was able to upgrade my 3D printer as well as the curing station and the wash station uh, back in March. Uh, I was using the Saturn 4K for some time. It was a great printer, but in March I decided to upgrade to the AK model. Now, Elegu has two uh, AK models available. One is taller. I just didn't have uh, a lot of room to maneuver that around, so I stuck with the AK, which looks exactly like the 4K. Um, one thing that this comes with now is the hood comes with an opening in the back that you can hook in a, uh, a venting tube and uh, I decided to take advantage of that uh, by first printing, uh, 3D printing this uh, adapter that you see here. I'll place the link below in case you're interested. And uh, once I did that, I was able to buy some duct tubing at Ace Hardware and hook it into this fan that you see mounted on that wall back there. Um, the fan is something I had installed early on when I uh, had the workbench built and uh, it was something that was supposed to help with fumes and stuff. Never really did a whole lot, but uh, when this um, came around I was thinking, you know what, I could hook that up directly to that, that fan and it works perfectly as you can see here. It's all hooked up, so it's really nice to have that added measure. Now the, the AK is not only faster, but it also has a bigger build plate. You can see the comparison here. And what's interesting is I actually printed this statue first with my 4K, and when I got the AK, I decided to reprint the head and check this out. You can see now uh, both prints, 4K versus 8K, and you can see the difference in quality for sure. And wow, you can see a lot more detail. Along with this, I upgraded the curing and wash station. The, these are now separate. Before, they were combined into one unit where you'd have to take the tub off and put on a rotating platform for the UV as you're changing from one to the other. Uh, but here they are separate. This is a larger curing station now with two elements, two vertical elements that will shine UV light on your print as it rotates. But there's also an additional element uh, on the bottom, so it's getting uh, exposure from the bottom side also. 
Uh, the, the wash station is larger uh, versus the old one. Uh, so not only is it separate, but it's also bigger, which is nice. Uh, so it accommodates larger prints as well. Okay, guys. Well, thanks again for following along. I really do appreciate you guys watching. And if you have any questions or comments about this particular project, feel free to leave them down below or email me at innercitermodeler at gmail.com. Coming up on the channel now, I do plan on getting a short video together just to show you what I plan on bringing to the show and also uh, give you an idea of what I have uh, in mind for the video this year for Wonderfest. I want to do something a little different. So uh, hope to see you in that next video. In the meantime, take care and I'll see you next time.